Hi everybody, this is David Olin from Roland and today we're looking at how easy it is to use the Phantom alone to create a song from start to finish. Now as you know, the Phantom integrates really well with your DAW. We have the DAW control mode, we have individual channels via USB and so on, but that's not the theme for today because today we're using the Phantom alone. Now in this video, I'm also going to be using a lot of real-time control. I'm going to be using the different pad modes for editing separate parts of the sounds, for jumping in between sections of songs and playing sound and so on so a lot of control right on the panel basically so let's get to it okay so let's start with a big bang I'm gonna hit record uh, I have my recorder set the way I like it uh, which is weight note and uh, input quantize I want that set to eighth notes so um, now whenever I start playing it's gonna start recording automatically so I'm just gonna record a, a big bang here Cool, now that's recorded and it's gonna repeat every 16 bars. Actually, I wanna keep this for something, so I'm gonna save this into a group as well, uh, which I just did now. So that is uh, the big bang, which is gonna be accentuating every 16 bars, and now we can start getting into the actual drum programming. Right, so I'm gonna start with a TR record. Now, the TR record is of course a reference to our classic drum machines like the TR909, TR808, and of course more recently, the TR8S and so on. Um, so, we can program this just like the drum machine now. Um, we have 16 steps and you simply choose the sound you want by playing it. So there's my kick and I'm gonna put it here on those steps. And now we got that looping. Uh, and now I want to add some hi-hat to this. By simply playing the hi-hat, I've now chosen that as well. Uh, now if I want some weaker hits, I'll simply play it in a more weak way, like that. And now we have our little ghost notes there. Maybe we want a little snare ghost notes there as well. Uh, and now I want the main snare. And there we go. Now we have a basic beat going. Um, what I want to do now is actually uh, just do a little quick edit because I want to show you something nice we have here, which is the microscope edit. And if I go in here, I can see all my events, my notes, my velocities and things like that. And I can actually just go in and surgically uh, change whatever I want. So let's say I want to change that hi-hat to something else. I can easily do that by just turning the dial here or I could just playing the new sound I want like this. So now I change that to a pedal hi-hat. Now we got that going. So that's the foundation of the drums. And now uh, we want to add some more drums to this. And I'm just going to jump to a different track. I actually have the same drum kit assigned to this track, but I like to keep them separate because that leaves me in control of levels and uh, separation of sounds and so on. So um, I'm just going to now uh, go into TR Record again on the same drum kit, but with different sounds. So here, for instance, I have a rise. And maybe we want a little bit of tambourine as well. And also some weaker tambourines. Good. Uh, so now that bit is finished and I'm going to go to a third drum track actually. And this one I want to do something different with. So I'm going to go into real time record now and I'm going to play the pads over here. So I have some chopped up drum loops. Again, this is actually on the same track. So this is my... Those are my main drums, there's a ride I recorded, and up here... Uh, I have some chopped up drum loops. So, um, I'm gonna just play these, because basically the pads act as a keyboard as well, if you want to, and you can actually send these notes to different channels if you want. Uh, but I'm just gonna use it for these drum loops now, so here we go. Like that. So, uh, now I'm gonna record this live. And uh, again, my sequencer is set to wait notes, so I can start whenever I want. And there is my drum loop. Uh, now what I want to do is change the pad mode to mute. Uh, now my pads here are actually mute buttons for the different tracks. And this is really useful for my next bit. So I'm just going to actually turn the main drum off there and just keep the drum loop. And then I'm going to add my final bit of drums here. So uh, we'll go into TR record and I'm going to make a little snare fill. I have my little 909 kit here and now I'm just gonna put that all over the 16 steps and I've changed the length here to be two uh, bars so I can simply go to the second bar there and do the same there so uh, if we play this back now now we just have a long fill 
Uh, we can easily change the scale to 30 second notes. So if I want the end of this fill to be a bit more intense, we have something like that. Uh, now, uh, finally, of course, this, this sounds pretty, pretty stiff right now. So what we want to do now is to get some dynamics into this. And uh, we can go into a different type of editor than the one I showed you earlier, which in this case would be the piano roll. So here's the piano roll. And you have a nice overview of what's going on with the velocity and everything. So if I just hit velocity here, I can easily change the dynamics by just simply drawing on the screen my desired uh, velocity curve. So if you play this back again, now it sounds way nicer. Or we can do something like this. I think I prefer this one. So now I have a fill that I can drop in and out whenever I like. And now the full drums are back. So this is a really nice way of just kind of live jamming and um, arranging stuff live. So that's it for the drums, and now I think it's time for some bass. So I've got a pretty cool bass sound here, and it's got actually quite a lot going on. So I want to switch to pad mode to partial switch and select, which actually lets me switch on and off the different partials of the sound. And also it lets me select whatever sound I want to work with as well. So uh, I'm going to turn all off except for number one. So here you can hear I have a basic, just a sine wave. On number three, just an octave, but on number two, I have a distorted sound. And that's possible because every patch has its own effect unit, but you can choose what partial goes into the effect and what doesn't. So uh, these two are dry and this is distorted, even though I only have a single effect unit. Uh, and now finally on partial four, I have the step filter. And this is actually really interesting. We can go and have a quick look at this. Uh, I'm using the step LFO. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, partial four. And here we can look at the step LFO shape. And we have a lot of stuff going on here, a lot of different shapes. I can quickly make some changes if I want to. And I can also control the overall filter with a mod wheel. Now let's put all of these together again. And let's record some bass into the track. So once again, I'm going to do real-time record. Just hit the record button. I've got my settings made here already. Uh, again, I have wait notes, so I can start playing whenever. So let's go. And there's my bass. Now uh, we want to add something else, but first I want to save this into a group, just like I did earlier. And I'll explain later what actually, what that means and why I'm doing it. So uh, I think we need some piano right now. So I'm going to go over to my piano track here. Uh, so this is basically a kind of lo-fi piano that I made using random LFO on the pitch, just a tiny bit. And I also have... Uh, the chorus level uh, on the mod wheel. Uh, so let's record a little bit of piano uh, in real time again uh, on top of this. Okay, so there's my piano and now once again I'm going to save this into a group. Uh, so that's going to be number two. And again, I'll explain this a little bit later. And uh, let's move on. Now, some pads. So I'll just jump over to my pad channel here. And actually this one is quite nice because I'm uh, controlling the filter with a uh, mod wheel here. And also I have a nice and wide pitch bend range. So let's just put that into the track and see what happens. And there we go. Now, of course, you can also do all of these things without stopping. So I'm just stopping to explain, but you can actually do this all in one take if you want. 
Okay, so that's my pads and uh, let's just yet again save this into a group. This is going to be group number three and we'll get back to that, like I said before. Okay, so the next bit is actually going to be a little bit special because I thought it would be cool to have a vocal sample. Uh, sadly, I couldn't get a singer, so I'll have to do it myself, but it's really easy thanks to the uh, lovely sampling menu we have in here. So we can sample to keyboard and I can check my settings. Uh, we can sample the keyboard itself if we want to. I can actually just uh, record and sample all of this if I want to and make that into an audio sample. But uh, what I want to do now is of course sample the input. So I have my sample mode uh, set to input and I've set my original sample to be an F sharp because that's what I'm going to sing roughly. And uh, we have a bunch of other settings as well, but I think we're good for now. So I'm just going to start a real time recording and I'm actually going to mute a couple of tracks. And then now I can uh, play the music as a background to what I'm singing, but I'm only going to record the vocals. So, uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, so now that's recorded. Uh, let's see how it went. Uh, we'll just give it a minute to um, calculate the sample, to render the sample. And um, then we'll set the start point and end point, and that'll be that. Okay, so now that that's recorded and saved, uh, the Phantom has already made a patch for me with the sample in it. So we can now play this sample easily on the keyboard. But I don't want to use this patch because I've made another patch already which is way cooler than this one and has lots of uh, interesting assignments for the sample. All I need to do first is edit that patch and just put my new sample onto it. Right. But uh, what I want to do is have some fun with this and that's why I have pre-assigned some effects to it like the DJ FX looper. which I can also control the loop size of using this mod wheel. Hit them behind your eyes a And of course I can also do this whilst playing it melodically. So that is my patch and now uh, let's put this into the arrangement. And there we go. So now we have most of the sections for a little song, I think. Uh, I'm gonna save this into uh, group four, which I'll get back to later. Uh, but um, first, I'd also like to add maybe just one more section. So uh, let's see if we can add like an alternate piano part, for instance. Okay, cool. So there's my alternate piano part. Um, and once again, I'm going to save this to a group. This will be number nine. And finally, I just want a little, uh, I just want a little break as well. Okay, so for the break, I'm going to go with uh, one of these full parts that I had. And then I'm going to uh, mute a few bits. So I'm going to mute number nine and ten. So basically, uh, the basic drums. Oh, actually, yeah, number ten I can keep. And uh, we'll remove the bass as well. Something like that, maybe. So this could be, be a nice little break. And I'm going to save that as group number five. So now we have basically four kind of full parts. We have one break and we have an ending as well. So now that we have all of these elements, uh, it's really easy to, of course, build a full song by just putting different groups in a row. Uh, but what I like to do is to perform them live and just trigger them live. And thanks to the pad mode, that is really easy. Uh, again, like I said, um, we have the, a bunch of different pad modes here that can do a lot of interesting stuff. And in this case, I've chosen group play. So now I can hit any of these 16 pads and they will trigger those groups that I was making before. So if you remember, I had just drums and bass on number one. I had added piano on number two. 
And for instance, I had my B section on number nine. So as you can see, it's really, really easy to switch between these in real time as well. So let's finish off by triggering these different groups and also playing some nice sounds on top. So here I have a nice distorted, almost guitar type sound. And a nice uh, velocity sensitive vocal sound that actually jumps between different imported samples depending on the velocity. I have a nice uh, kind of vinyl roads with a DJFX looper again. And of course, I'd like to start with the vocal sample I just made. <laughs> 